Hello and welcome to part two of the season preview show, Graham. Uh, in this part, we're going to be speaking to Captain Eric Riss, who, of course, when he's fancy new Kevlar's, <laughs> was looking very sharp on uh, practice day. Uh, and, of course, we're going to be speaking to reserve duo Mark Williamson and Josh Pickering. And we'll catch up with Swedish new boy Joel Anderson. But first up, we're going to speak to Captain Eric Riss about his expectations for the 2018 season. Uh, so joined now by Monarchs captain for 2018, Eric Riss. Eric, looking forward to the season ahead? Yeah, of course. Uh, it's been a long time, no riding. Um, looking forward to be the captain. It's a new challenge for me. Uh, yeah, I think we have quite a good team, quite a couple of young riders. And uh, yeah, just from the looks of it, it's going to be a good season and it's going to be fun. And are you, you feel prepped for the season ahead? Obviously, you had a bit of time in Australia over the winter. Do you think that's helped? Um, well, it was just holidays, really. Um, so it didn't have anything to do with Speedway. Just wanted to have some time off everything and yeah, but after that, um, started preparing for the season. I had a couple of practices the last couple of weeks, so um, yeah, I'm feeling good. I had a practice today actually, so um, yeah, I'm well prepared and ready. And a big season ahead for yourself, obviously. You've got rides lined up in Sweden, Denmark, uh, Poland, I think, as well. So you know, are you looking for big things this year? Yeah, um, I'm looking for a club in Poland as well, and I'm, I think I'm going to sign somewhere in, in May in the next transfer window. Um, it's not as big of a year as last year. I kind of reduced my races a bit to last year because last year was a bit too much for me. I had about 120 meetings. And uh, yeah, this year I want to put the focus more on, you know, on, the, on the quality I perform every meeting. So um, a bit less meetings, but more points. And obviously this year there's no Sam Masters in the team. Are you aiming for that number one race jacket? Yeah, I already see myself as the number one. <laughs> I always do, but uh, yeah. No, um, I always de develop my average um, each year. So, And I'm confident I'm going to do the same this year. So um, there's not really anything that can stop me to get to the number one place. And then first season as captain, obviously you, you stood in for Sam a little bit last year. Will that change anything for yourself and maybe having to look out for your teammates a little bit more than just yourself during the meeting? Yeah, 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 it will change. Um, I used to be like, the last couple of years, um, of course, this, this, this position someone else had as captain, so um, you, had a, you, you, don't, you didn't have the, the things to do that the captain does, yeah, obviously. Um, this year it's going to be different. I, I'm going to be the one that has to take uh, responsibility and look after my teammates, but I'm ready to do that. I'm looking forward to it. Ever. Thanks very much for Tim, Eric, and all the best for the season. Graham, Eric comes into this season. We bit extra pressure on him this year. He's not got two lead leaders in front of him that can carry the points. He needs to come in and score points. Extra pressure with the captaincy there as well. But as we all know, Eric is just confidence. I think so. I mean, Eric King. is. He's so <laughs> laid back. Um, and I actually think, OK, there's extra pressure here, but... You know, from speaking to him, he's actually lowered his calendar this year. Obviously, he's no Premiership this year, um, so he's got Sweden, he's got Denmark. He's potentially, I think, going to sign for somebody in Poland later in the season, and he's got us. But you know, I spoke to him earlier on in the year, um, and he said he did 120 meetings last year, and by the end of the season, he was he was done in. He spared that back this year to focus on, you know, quality over quantity. Um, he's immaculately kitted out as ever, reminiscent of the old Les Collins leather <laughs> colours there. Um, and I think Eric's in for a very big season. Would you, would you expect him not to sign for a Premiership team this season if a space came up? It's always difficult. These guys say they want to ride every night of the week and if an opportunity came up, would he turn it down? But I think from speaking to him, I think he's happy with what he's got on his plate just now. Uh, of course, as we mentioned, we've got a fantastic reserve duo, at least for the start of the season. I don't see that staying there for too long. Josh coming in, his second season yeah. in British Speedway. Matt coming in as a new monarch, but he's very... He's, had a couple of years under his belt at this level. What are we expecting for the reserves pair to start with, Graham? Um, I think, you know, I, I've probably got my Monarchs tinted glasses on here, um, but I think it's the strongest pairing in the league by a, by a mile. Uh, I know there's other teams that have built strong, but I think where we've got, as our two guys have got the averages they've got in the main body of the team, you know, Matt spent well, at least two thirds of last season in the main body of the team. Josh, pretty much the same way as he had put one sort of six or eight match spell down there. So these are guys that have averaged well, four and a half going on five between them in the main body. So you put that down into the reserves with the new rules, um, you know, with the sort of tactical rules changing. So it's only one tactical substitute now, not the double ride. I think reserves are going to be more important because you're not, 
maybe going to need to, to have to cover rides and things like that as much from a tactical point of view. So it'll more be about getting the most from the bottom end to cover for any guys in the the main body that are struggling. Um, we've got two new guys in the main body. It might take them a bit of time to bed in. So the fact that we've got not one but two guys at the bottom that can take a ride each, if need be, worst case scenario, I think leaves us in very good stead. Uh, Josh, obviously, it's uh, number seven. We wouldn't be expecting them to stay there long. No, and uh, I think that will actually be the interesting thing this season. Is I don't expect Josh to stay there long. I don't expect Matt to stay there long. And once Joe and Max got up to speed, you know, I think we could have a revolving door of at least four, potentially five guys at the bottom end all season. And we're always going to have two very, very strong reserves. Yeah, and we can catch up the reserve pair in Matt Williamson and Josh Pickering now. So joined now by Monarchs News Reserve, Matt Williamson. Matt, looking forward to the season ahead? Yeah, I can't wait now. It's uh, come round faster than, than what you always think. It seems like the season's only just finished and we're, we're back round again. Um, so yeah, I can't wait just to get back out on the bike with the weather being so bad. It, it's been hard work. So yeah, just, just ready to get going now. I know I spoke to you a few weeks ago at the video show and you had a few practice sessions planned at Leicester and stuff. Did you manage to get out on the track at all or were those all way away by the snow? Managed to get out at Leicester and then I was supposed to be back the following week. That got cancelled and then um, managed to get up to the little track at Northside and got on there and then I had planned on going to Scunthorpe again the weekend just being and that got cancelled. So I've managed to get out twice. Um, I've had plenty of time out on the motocross bike so at least I've kept bike fit and bike time. Um, so hopefully we get a good practice tomorrow and as long as I get a good good few rides you soon get back into the swing of it. And obviously this will be your first chance maybe to meet some of your new teammates and I, you know, you've had dinner with a couple of them I think. What, what's the feeling in the camp? Yeah well obviously you know I already know Ricky uh, just met, uh, met Max so um, yeah, it, it'll be good. Um, you know, I think we're all all a young, uh, youthful team, so hopefully we can all have a laugh and, and bounce off each other, and and it'll uh, give a good uh, team chemistry then. That's right. You must be one of the older guys in the team. Is that new for you? Well, yeah, I think there's uh, Ricky's older than me, and then and then it's me. So yeah, I'm still only <laughs> still only a kid myself, but uh, but yeah, it's um, you know it's going to be good. So yeah. And obviously, we, you know, big move this year, moving from Workington to Edinburgh. And a, a change in track size um, but is that something you're looking forward to is, is learning new things and improving again as a rider yeah well I'm you know I feel you know I am a quite an established big track rider now and um, so yeah I think this this could be the final nail in in my coffin that I need to to become a complete rider really um, you know I've, I know I've had some really good meetings at Armadale and I've also had some shockers so once I um, once I get it dialed in proper which I know I will do um, you know, it'll, it'll, I think it'll do me the world of good. And starting the season at reserve, is that something you've used as a positive as a springboard that there might be a few, I'm not going to say easier heats, but you know, there might be some points out there that you can pick up yeah. nice and early at the start of the season and get a good run into the into the league yeah. campaign when yeah. it starts? Yeah, well, obviously, um, you know, I basically did most of last season in the main body, which, you know, was uh, a massive achievement for myself. Um, I know we did have a quite underperforming team, but still, you know, I was I was in there, and so yeah, I think me being at reserve is is good for both me and the team, you know. But to be fair, looking down the board, I think a lot of teams have this year have structured the way that we have, and they do have at least one really strong reserve. So um, I don't look at it like that. I think you know everybody's there to be beaten, and uh, as long as I just go out there and and ride ride well, that's that's all that matters. Well, thanks very much, Matt. All the best for the season. I'm joined here by the returning Josh Perkin. Josh, firstly, welcome back. Are you glad to be back? Yeah, mate, definitely. It's um, coming in a bit fresher weather, but it's, it's still good to be here. And obviously, you've got a year behind you now. Are you expecting big things and looking forward to a big season ahead? Yes, yeah, pick up where we left off back home. And um, like you said, just yeah, look for a bigger season, I suppose. Uh, start in reserve, I'll be able to bang in a few rides here and there, I think. And um, yeah, just more time on the bike and just, just keep improving. That's all we can ask for. How did you find? Did you, did you enjoy your your summer? I guess back home, as you would call it, was it was it good? You know, you had good showing in the Aussie Championships. Were you happy about it, man? Yeah, definitely, mate. It was um, what we look for in a way. Before the championship started, I um, set a goal that I wanted to be in the top six. And um, after round one, when I was ranked second, I, me uh, goals changed very quick. But then to still end the championship in six in hindsight was a good thing. But you know, a bit disappointed considering how good we t uh, took off. You know, but. Um, yeah, I had my first ride again today on a bike and um, yeah, feeling, feeling pretty good. And obviously first chance tonight to meet some of the new guys, how do you think they're going to gel and do you think we're going to have another good atmosphere in the pits this year? Yeah, for sure. No, definitely. They seem very bubbly, most of the boys here and um, we already know the other four riders so uh, 
yeah, I think it's just going to be a matter of them getting used to how we act and, um, yeah, they'll just be together as one, I suppose. And any personal goals you've set for the season ahead? Yeah, I want to become a heat leader. Um, starting reserve, so you can only go up and um, I believe I'm, I'm good enough and with the year experience, I think we can just uh, take off, I think. Perfect. Thanks very much, Josh. Cheers, mate. Uh, Matt sounded confident yeah. there, Graham, going into the season, which is good to hear because they a lot of troubles at Workington yeah. last year. There was a lot of riders not happy, <laughs> particularly down there. Yeah. Uh, but he comes into that small outside. I'm sure he'll keep confidence from riding that Armadale. I think so. Uh, it's a track that once guys get dialed in, it, it gives them confidence to go elsewhere. And Matt's admitted himself he's a noted big track rider, but he wants to be a complete speedway rider, and he views this as a step on his speedway education. And you can always sort of congratulate him for taking that step. You know, many a rider would seen stay in their comfort zone and become a you know an eight-point home rider and a, a three-point away rider. Matt's not interested in that. He wants to go further. And Josh, I mean, it is a big season for Josh. He's had his bedding in here, so to speak. But coming in, especially starting the reserves, I'm expecting big things for Josh this year. I'm expecting him to be pushing for that third heat leader spot. Yeah, definitely. Again, you look at last season, we all know that Gaten was his Achilles heel last year. He had that wee sort of two-week spell where he'd been over to Germany and worked with Eric and sorted out his Gaten, and you know, the double-figure scores were falling in that spell. Starting at reserve, we had a year under his belt. You know, we, we won't touch on it, but we all know it was a tough year for Josh personally last year. First year away from his family. Um, some family stuff back home in Australia. I think this year he's hoping that he'll just be able to concentrate 100% on his racing. He knows what to expect. He knows the people around him are good people uh, and he's ready to go. Uh, at number four for the Monarchs at the start of the season is going to be new Swedish boy jo Josh, uh, Josh, Joe, Joe Anderson. Uh, Joe comes into that side and John mentioned it uh, in, in part one. There's actually a rider that the Monarchs have been looking at for a couple of years now. It's not somebody that we've just scouted off the, <laughs> off the market. Um, we obviously comes into the side. Not a lot of expectations on him, I wouldn't think, um, especially coming in for his first season. Um, but he comes highly recommended. Definitely. Again, he's another one. If you look at his pedigree, um, you know, as a guy who was a world under 21 finalist, he's dead four years, I believe, now in the Swedish elite league, which outside of Poland must be the top league in the world. Um, again, it's going to be new for him. Every track's going to be different. We've seen some Swedes come over and hit the ground running and, and fly on. We've seen some Swedes come over and struggle. Um, but again, when they start the season, we spoke about that a little bit with Max, been able to bed in. There's not going to be a huge amount of pressure really on, on Joe to start the season, and I think he'll come good as well. Do you think for Joe and Max, it's the, the volume of meetings is basically the thing that they're going to have to, be, to adapt to? I mean, I don't know how many race meetings Max does in America, but I'm sure it's a handful. Whereas Joe, if he's racing in Sweden, I'm not really sure if he's running in Denmark or whatever. Uh, it, it's not a lot of meetings throughout the summer. Come to British Speedway, suddenly you've got 50 odd meetings. It's a lot for man and machine to kind of kind of dial into it. It will be a difference, particularly for Max, as you mentioned, you know, you look at America, they kind of race on a Friday or a Saturday night, hit the same track every week against the same people, go to work on the Monday morning, do their Monday to Friday, nine to five, and then they're back at the racetrack. Um, and for Joe, well, I think Sweden's Tuesday, Thursday, maybe potentially for the two weeks, so it'll be a step up for him as well. And I think the variation in tracks as well will be the big difference, you know. You go from Armadale on a Friday to Workington on a Saturday to Newcastle on a Sunday, say, you know, that's a lot of setups, it's a lot of prep work. Um, these are the kind of things they'll need to learn. But I think with guys like Ricky, like Eric, you know, guys that have been there and done it for four years, five years, six years, whatever now, um, they'll have that help in the pits to, to help them along the way. Just to look around the league slightly, Graham. Uh, it's a strong division again. We obviously had the, the situation with Scott Nichols during the winter. Which, if you look at guys like Scott Nichols, Chris Harris at Glasgow, there's a lot of these riders now filtering down into this division. Actually, really, really strong, really tough division uh, to kind of get a good average in now. Who, who are you looking at as kind of favourites for the playoffs? Obviously, I mean, that's the thing here. You only need to get to the playoffs and we start again. But who would you, what size would you be looking at to be up there competing at the start of the season? I mean, obviously, we all know nothing's won on paper, but looking at the start of the season, I really like Low Kept Switch's team. Uh, we know Sheffield kind of went on and won the league last year, but I actually think without the injuries, Ipswich would have been the team that actually would have won the double. Uh, I think they've done very well. You know, you've got Danny King and Rory Schlein, what a spearhead there. Daniel Hume at the bottom end looked to be going in well. Nico Cavati, you know, due back. Um, you are friends 30 miles west of here. They build a strong team every year. You mentioned they've got Harris. The, the battles between him and Warrell for number one will be, will be good. They've got a solid middle order now with Paul Stark, Klaus Vissen, and then you know James Sargent will be a trump card at reserve. Um, 
beyond that, I think there's then maybe, they're my two that I'd put at the top. I think then there's maybe a bank in the middle of five or six teams that if things fall well, could be up there, could be mid-table. I include ourselves in that. I include the likes of Redcar, Workington, you know, teams that there's a few question marks. And then I think there's maybe a couple of teams at the bottom that, again, they need things to go very well for them. And we know Newcastle have built a team at a budget and no one can ever argue against that. And they'll be entertaining speed with there with some of the guys they've signed. And I think Berwick have got a few question marks as well. But if you're asking me to pick a name out the hat just now, it will be Ipswich. Well, that's fantastic. You're on the spot. I'm not making any <laughs> predictions for a season other than it's going to be another fantastic year, Armadale, and hopefully the Monarchs will be in those end-of-season playoffs and then finals as well, of course. Um, but that's it for this season's preview show, uh, and we hope to see you around Armadale for the coming season. Good night.